Welcome everyone. I'm delighted to speak to you today. I uh, really appreciate you taking this time to be with us. Uh, my name is David Williams uh, and I am responsible for the low voltage electrical business at Schneider Electric here in the UK and Ireland. Today, I want to share with you our vision for a new energy landscape. An energy landscape that is more digital and more electric. And that's what we call electricity 4.0. And it's the key to solving the biggest challenges that the world is facing right now and in the future. So today we are at an inflection point. On one hand, energy prices are a challenge in many, many parts of the world. And we've seen this in our daily lives here in the UK, in our own homes and businesses. On the other hand, we have a climate crisis which affects all of us. To tackle the climate crisis, we need to decarbonize. The amount of carbon in our atmosphere has risen exponentially over the last 100 years or so. Today, levels are higher than they have been on Earth for the last 2 million years. And you can see the rise is steepest over the past 100 and then the past 50 years. If we continue at the same rate of increase, we're on track for a temperature rise of between four and 6%. Progress is already being made. It's just not enough. To be on track for net zero world, where we'll only see an increase of 1.5 degrees, we need to halve emissions this decade. The current commitments made by governments around the world allow for about four gigatons of annual CO2 savings by the end of this decade. That path will only take us to a two and a half degree rise, take us to a two and a half degree rise where we need to be on track for one and a half degrees. So we would need to go three times faster to limit the increase in global temperatures to one and a half. Interestingly, the discrepancy of this one, this one degree, two and a half isn't enough because it will see sea levels rise by an additional meter and displace about a billion additional people. So it's really important we continue on the journey to the one point, limiting the temperature rise to 1.5. In 2022, we saw extreme volatility in energy prices, and they peaked in September last year with about a 24 times increase since 2020, so in the last two years. And a lot of this was in response to the energy crisis, governments and companies increasing their purchasing over the summer period. And we saw that peak there in 2022. Um, and we are seeing prices fall now a little bit into the late last year and this year, but still huge, huge increases and also very volatile prices over that period of time. Um, the other thing, of course, is around energy supply uh, with the geopolitical challenges we've seen across Europe, uh, particularly in Ukraine and Russia. Uh, and certainly European countries where they're buying a lot of Russian gas, uh, you see that additional challenge not only in prices, but also in terms of energy availability and also resiliency. And of course, the other thing we see with high energy prices is it drives broader high inflation around cost of goods uh, and transport as well. So today, we're at the critical juncture where we need to meet not only our long-term commitments around climate change, but also we need to battle those short-term challenges and drive the short-term priorities around access to secure, reliable, and cost-effective energy. What we believe at Schneider Electric is the answer to both of these challenges is in fact, climate, is in fact energy. Uh, and our research shows it's entirely possible to decarbonize energy completely by 2050, as well as making it more widely accessible. But to do this, we need to look at energy differently. So first of all, the decarbonization of supply. And this is just one side of the energy coin, but it's the obvious thing that comes to mind. So think about renewables uh, in terms of off-site supply of energy, uh, impacting how we choose to purchase energy, for example, clean energy tariffs or PPAs all around wind or solar 
or, or even uh, shore power. Um, the other piece is around on-site renewable generation, whether that's solar, microgrid, or storage. It's all about renewable electricity and purchasing or creating that electricity differently, whether that's at government level, whether that's at organizational level from a commercial or industrial building, or even whether that's at a residential level uh, in terms of a, a residential microgrid for the home uh, with battery storage, you know, electric vehicle charging, uh, and solar panels on the roof. So we need to replace around 45% of the energy supply uh, and make that supply renewable uh, and moving away from the fossil fuels of today. On the flip side of the coin, we have the demand side and supply always chases after demand. So reducing demand for fossil fuels by, tradition, by transitioning to more electrification is essential. So there are a number of things here to look at. There's the reduction and then there's also the electrification of processes. Um, so we need to reduce uh, the energy used for more efficiency and drive circularity. And we also need to electrify processes to get to the 2050 targets. So there are many things around demand side that can be done, whether that's designing and building for a low carbon future. So we talk a lot, for example, about heat pumps in the home, but a lot of that starts with the correct levels of insulation, for example. So we have to ensure we're designing and building for these low carbon technologies. Measuring, monitoring and saving. So we need to drive connected systems and software to allow us to get real time data uh, because you cannot manage what you can't measure. Circularity for sustainability, so that is about reusing uh, rather than sending to waste, might be component parts or, or broader full materials. And then of course, driving electricity everywhere. So think about the migration from electric, uh, from combustion engine vehicles to the electric vehicles of today. And all of those factors help us tackle energy demand. So Schneider Electric sees the answer to this as what we call electricity 4.0. And it's our vision to help customers achieve their energy and sustainability goals. And this is all about from strategy to execution. So it has to be an end to end process. And at Schneider Electric, we are able to do that both globally and locally. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of how we do this. So we believe at Schneider that digital drives efficiency. It allows us to make energy more visible, to understand it better, how we're using it, and also to automate processes that deliver smarter, optimized consumption. Not just to go with less, but also to cut out waste, which is a huge part of the energy dilemma. Uh, it makes energy green, uh, and green energy and green electric is the most efficient form and it's the best vector for decarbonisation. But it's important to note that a lot of the technologies that we talk about exist today. So when you put digital and electricity together, you're able to transform both supply and demand, and that is already happening today. So many people will be familiar with the grid uh, supply and demand side historically was linear fossil fuel supply uh, and, and balanced demand. So coal-fired power station, linear supply through to the end user. But the landscape is already transforming. And it's transforming to a greener, cleaner supply with increasing renewables. So the difference here, we've added the wind turbines, we've added the solar array, and we're adding now green energy into the grid to be consumed by the end user. And then we start to see prosumers coming onto the grid. So organizations, buildings, homes, they're not only producing, uh, not only consuming electricity, but also producing electricity. So we then have a bi-directional flexible grid where these prosumers can use the energy they generate or also put that energy back onto the grid. 
Then we have electrification, which is reducing our demand on fossil fuels. So we've talked about electric vehicles, but in this case, we have the electrified rail network. Uh, and the electrified rail network, utilizing the renewable energy, is then reducing demand on fossil fuels. And then finally, we have digital technology, and the digital technology is driving demand optimization. So what this is around software allowing us to add flexibility to the grid, control demand, move demand on energy uh, to the uh, cheapest or lowest use. So think about time of use tariffs, for example, and allowing people to charge their vehicles at home overnight when energy demand is at its lowest. And that's what digital technology allows us to do in terms of driving efficiency. So we've talked a little bit about electricity 4.0, and I thought it would be good just to really explain uh, what that is. Uh, and the reason for that is, is along the bottom here, you see the industrial revolutions. And, and a lot of people are familiar with those. Now, everybody has heard of the industrial revolutions. But what about the electrical revolutions? So broadly, every time there has been one of the four industrial revolutions, there has also been a major shift in the electrical system and in energy. And that's really because the industrial revolution has driven that demand. So we've had simultaneous revolution. So think about the early days of steam power and mechanization driving industry. This was sort of the 1.0. The early pioneers of electricity were also starting to pioneer the use of you know, Volta and Faraday. And then 100 years later, the world had learned to scale that technology. So we were into mass production, industry 2.0. And that really broadly is when the first mass use, uh, mass deployment of electricity came on board coal-fired power stations and the like, really driving the industrial revolution. But also you see here, this is the start of driving more and more CO2 emissions. And it's really around this industry and electricity 2.0, the invention of the coal power fire stations that really start to drive up emissions. And we really start to see that rapid increase in human-induced CO2 emissions. Then we go to electricity 3.0 which is all about uh, Silicon Valley, the emergence of chip technology. Uh, and with that was the start of the investigation into renewable technology and silicon enables really solar and the start of the digital uh, management of electricity. And then finally, we have very recently really Industry 4.0, which is all about the industrial internet of things, connecting all of the industrial technology uh, across the internet. So it shares data, and talks. Um, and then electricity 4.0 is really about broadly digital management of electricity at scale. So think about um, software to manage the fleet of electric vehicle charges, for example, uh, and really help drive that efficiency. So we thought we'd share with you what our end user customers were really planning to do as part of their sustainability journey. So um, this is research from a, a survey of uh, end users that we did um, and really talking about how they plan to develop their reduction plans when it comes to carbon uh, and really driving their sustainability plans. So the first piece we see is that about 50%, sort of closest to 60% are working on scope one, scope two, switching to clean energy supply, which is sort of the most obvious place to start. It's really where most people think about it. Um, is energy supply and shifting that energy supply to renewables uh, and really driving green energy um, into their organizations uh, particularly. What we see uh, next is that then a, a smaller number of people, so around 40% of people, are really starting to drive also their scope three emissions and reducing for efficiency and circularity. So more advanced companies looking to reduce the energy demand as well as looking at things like microgrids, for example, that they're reducing consumption and also looking at their supply chain. And then finally, uh, again, a smaller number of companies, about three out of 10, so about 30%, are really looking at electrification of processes. So whether that's driving electrification in things like their vehicle fleet uh, and moving from combustion engines to electric, for example. So smaller number of companies, but really driving that um, electrification of process, sort of the, the top of the peak, if you like. Um, and then I think as well, it's important to talk about as part of this work, where we talked to about 50% of the Fortune 500 companies, 
we learned that the companies that are really at the top of the peak here that are really driving sustainability and CO2 reduction with their own businesses are taking an integrated approach to the net zero energy landscape. And what does that integrated approach mean? Well, for Schneider Electric, it means first of all, building a strategy, then really digitizing that strategy and using technology, uh, and then implementing your decarbonization plans uh, a longer period of time. Um, and strategize really is about building that robust plan. Understanding where we are today by taking a baseline and measuring, creating our roadmap, structuring a program and some governance and really engaging in our ecosystem and also communicating the commitment. And the communication is really important because often, uh, certainly in a big organization, uh, human impact and people are a huge part of reducing energy usage and getting to net zero. Then we move into digitize. And this is really about understanding and monitoring energy and carbon in real time. Because where we monitor, we can understand and we can also save. And only then can we accurately report and benchmark our progress. And decarbonize is then about the steps we take, sort of that we talked about earlier, really, the combination of replacing energy supply, electrifying processes, and also driving all of those strategies to reduce energy and resource use for a more efficient and more circular economy. So there you have it. The climate challenge is really an energy challenge. And we have the tools that we need, we have the technology. The question really is that we have the collective will to get there. So we have to strategize, digitize, and decarbonize. And the moment to do that is now. Thank you.